Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Rick Uti here with Aragon Web, your home for old school Aragon reviews where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Today we've got the brand new Gamo Magnum Swarm Gen 3i Pro, something like that. Yeah, let's get into it. Before we get started, I want to remind you guys that we have a Patreon channel now, and also we have the Officers Club over at Ergon Army. If you guys want to see some exclusive content, some behind the scenes stuff, or you want early access to ads free versions of our content, check it out. Sign up, and uh, it's not very expensive, and your support helps us do some really cool projects outside our normal sponsorship. So, I want to remind you guys that we have that going on. So, what are we doing today? Well, um, yeah, so a while back I was doing a ton of studio stuff and we got these in and I did the studio sort of unboxing the 177. I actually did the unboxing and scope setup on this one too, but the camera's like screwed up. Um, yeah, it was my fault. Uh, brand new equipment and hadn't really worked through the process and I goofed. So we didn't show you that, that video. I didn't want to just waste your time with half a video. So what I decided to do is we've already done the like unboxing and installing the scope with the 177. Today we're gonna basically show you how to get the scope sighted in. And we've done this video or this type of video many times, um, but you know, it never hurts to go over it again, especially if um, you're seeing this video for the first time and you're looking at how do I set up my scope? I got the brand new Gamma Magnum Pro and how do I set my scope up? Well, yeah, let me show you how to do it. So I've done the scope mounting, um, and if you haven't done this, I'll just really quickly remind you to make sure that you have thoroughly made, uh, thoroughly checked all your, your scope mount screws. So if you just threw this on and you didn't check the top part, uh, take, a, take a couple minutes and check it because it's actually pretty easy for these to be loose. Um, when we do the Squirrel Master, uh, I have many times gone early to help set up the guns, and boy, I can't tell you how many times the mounts are just loosey-goosey. Uh, folks are complaining about why they can't get shots to land where they want, and yeah, you come back around and uh, trying to help them out and then realize that their, their mount screws are just super loose. Now, these were a little loose, but they're okay. They're okay now. Uh, there's also the side screws. We'll just check those too. But if you want to know like all the details on how to set this up, check out the video on the 177 because uh, I'll kind of walk through all the details on actually getting the scope out of the box and mounted on the gun. Okay, so disclosure. Um, I've not taken shot one with this gun. Not a single shot has been through this gun. So we're gonna we're gonna learn together. We're gonna see how this thing is gonna do. Now for this video, I'm shooting just the Gamma Red Fires. Uh, when we do our full review, I will do uh, I'll go through a bunch of other pellets and see what might work. But for today, we're just gonna try the Red Fires. Now why am I using the Red Fires? Well, because in my experience, they're really really good pellets uh, with the Gamma Break Barrels. Um, not so much maybe with the PCPs, but the Break Barrels, they do really well. So. This is the pro version. The big difference is the stock's different. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna like it or if I'm gonna love it or not. I guess we're gonna find out. Um, I prefer a stock like this to the thumb hole grip. Um, and I guess it's the, you have these little cutouts here or these indents. I like putting my thumb up here. It's kind of tough to do with a, with a thumb hole stock. Uh, I really like this more traditional um, stock style. It is ambidextrous. It is composite. Um, people will talk about pl it's plastic. Well, it's composite. Okay. So it has plastic elements, but it's not toy plastic. This is high grade composite firearm class composite stock. So it's good stuff. Um, the thing that really sets these guns apart, obviously, uh, is going to be the magazine. 
It has a 10 shot rotary mag. And these mags are special because they don't advance until you fire. So that's really cool. Um, the first couple generations of the Gamma Magnums or the, excuse me, the Gamma Swarm ma uh, mags uh, would just advance after you cock the gun. You, the pellet pusher uh, pushes the pellet in the breech and then when it comes back out, it advances the mag. And that's fine as long as you don't forget that you've cocked the gun and uh, try and drive another pellet down the breech, which is easier to do than you might think. Um, and the next thing you know, you have uh, double fed your gun and it doesn't shoot good or you could mess up the moderator and all kinds of stuff. So the fact that these don't advance until uh, you fire, it feels the recoil of the gun and then advances. Um, if you are unfamiliar with brake barrels, then let me really quickly walk you through a couple important things. Uh, one is if you're new to them, uh, start close. Um, don't try and shoot 50 yards. Don't try and shoot 25 yards. Uh, today we are going to get side up, set up here. Uh, there's a little O-ring in this magazine, and if the pellet doesn't go in far enough to grab that O-ring around the waist, then uh, it can jam on you. So sometimes you may have to give it a little help. Anyway, today we're set up at 15 yards. Now, why do I say that? Because First of all, it's a brand new scope, brand new gun. I don't know where it's going to hit, and I want paper to tell me so I can make my adjustments. But also, if you're new to this, you may find that for a while, while you're learning the technique and learning your gun, um, your shots are going to be inconsistent. And it's not the gun. It's probably not your scope. It's going to be you. Um, and I know that's hard to swallow because we all in our own minds are just, you know, quickly down under and can make thousand yard shots, you know, in our sleep. Uh, but the reality is these take a bit of practice to really learn how to shoot them well. Um, my buddy, uh, uh, Harold, with Iguana Lifestyles, we did uh, a couple hunts with them down in South Florida. And we, we get to ch chuckling because he, this is what he runs and guns with uh, is a Gamo Magnum. And he's taken 75, 100 yard shots offhand with his gun. I can't do that. Um, and it's so funny because you'll get folks down there and they've got all these fancy PCPs and he's just, he's tearing them up with a brake barrel and they're so frustrated because they're running out of air and pellets and everything else. It's hilarious. Um, and then people come down there with the brake barrels and they, 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 they want to blame the gun and he'll take their gun and then start popping them. So it really is. Uh, there is a technique to this, and we're going to talk a little bit about that as well as getting the sighting in. Um, again, we're at 15 yards, start close. It's just going to give you like easier success early on, and then as, as you're getting your groups, you get them to shrink down as you get better and better. Um, once you can put them all on the bull, then, then back the target up to 20 yards or 25 yards, and then do the same thing. As you get better with your technique, then you're going to see your accuracy improve. I'm just telling you, it's probably not the gun. It's probably not the optic. It's going to be you. I just tell you, it was me in the beginning until I learned how to shoot them. All right. So we've got our 10 shot mag. We've got our standard uh, gamo optic here. It's a three to nine by 40. It's non AO. So we're going to have to start at 15 yards. We might be able to use five or six uh, as you get to 25 yards and beyond. Then you can use the full range of magnification and have a clear sight picture. So um, hold is super important. Uh, let me talk about why it's super important. Um, you have a big heavy piston here, uh, and you have this here is what we'll call the compression chamber. So when I cock this gun, this piston is going to pull back, and this is going to fill up with air, ambient air. Um, now we are 45, 4600 feet here, so the air I have here is thinner than the air like in South Carolina where Angie's at. So Angie is going to get better velocity numbers than I will here because the air here is thinner. It's not, uh, and I've had people tell me, uh, Rick, you know, the air's thinner, the pellet will fly faster, it's less resistance. Okay, but this is making its air for power here. So it's like having less gunpowder in your shell. The bullet's gonna go slower. And that's what we have to deal with here. So if you see my numbers being a little bit slower than Angie's, the reason is um, we have air thinner here, so we have less to work with. All right, but anyway, so this piston's gonna pull back this could fill with air. When I pull the trigger, it's going to fly forward super fast, create enough pressure to overcome that pellet sitting in the breech, and then fire the pellet down. That's how these, that's how these guns work. All right, so um, when the piston, it's a big, heavy steel piston, when it hits the front of the compression chamber, the gun's going to want to jump forward. Now, why is that a problem? 
because it jumps forward while the pellet is still in the barrel. And I said, Andy, don't, don't need that anymore. Try and make my table where I can do this. I'm gonna have to have this bag closer. Is that gonna work? Let me just let me just see real quick here. All right. Yep. All right, I gotta adjust this. Okay. All right. So why is this important? When it hits the front, that barrel's gonna jump forward, right? So if I had a steel, a piece of steel here, and I hit it with a sledge, that steel's gonna move, right? Okay. Makes sense. So if this gun is just sitting here and this piston flies forward, hits the front of the compression chamber, the gun's gonna to wanna to jump forward. Depending on where my hand's at, that's gonna cause the gun to dip, the muzzle's gonna dip. Now if that pellet's still in the barrel, when that happens, if I change my hold, it's gonna be in a different place when the, when the pellet exits. So if you're shooting your brake barrel and you're wondering why your groups are like this, uh, best thing you can do is videotape yourself and see where you're holding the gun if you're changing your hold. More than likely, it, it, again, it comes down to technique, right? So you wanna have a very consistent hold every single time. Now, normally, I would use the, the, the screws as an index. They're a little far, so I'm gonna maybe use this curve here and kind of, it's a little bit rear heavy. I think I can get comfortable like that, okay? And that feels pretty good. It feels good in the shoulder. I really like this stock. I like this stock better than the uh, than the thumb hole. Okay. And what I want to do, and what you can, I, I might, I, when I'm learning a gun, I may put a little piece of tape there just so that I can feel it and index the same spot. So that means that whenever I make my adjustments, the pellet or the recoil should be very similar and the pellet's gonna be leaving the barrel at the same place and as it's diving forward. So super important guys, uh, I'm not kidding. <laughs> These guns do have a recoil, it's reverse recoil, and it will absolutely hose up your accuracy uh, if you don't learn how to deal with it. Okay, so I need to adjust this focus. So really the only focus adjustment you have on this scope, you don't have parallax, but you do have your reticle and I need to get this way backed out because I can't see anything. There we go. Okay. That's good. All right. Now we'll take our locking ring and get it locked in here. And then we'll take our first shot. Then we'll adjust our scope. Okay. The other thing you want to check, um, and we've already checked these, is your stock screws. Uh, you have two screws here and one back here. When they're loose, you're never gonna have consistent accuracy. So if all of a sudden, if you've been shooting good and all of a sudden your gun starts shooting like garbage, check your stock screws. Don't start swapping scopes and all that stuff. You're wasting your time, potentially. First, check your stock screws. Okay. I think we're all set. So we'll go ahead and put our mag in. Uh, like that, and we'll cock our gun. find my spot that's comfortable. Safety's off. Now we haven't sighted this, so I have no idea where this is gonna land. I'm gonna aim dead center for the bull and just see. Ow. Uh, it's got quite the wallet. Uh, I don't know where I hit that, so I'm gonna go check the target. I'll be right back. So that clipped extremely high. So let's um, go down. And we are potentially out of adjustment. Let's see what happens here. Okay, we're just a little left now. Let's come right. So on your scope, you have up. This says up. So if you turn that way, it brings your shot up. The other way takes your shot down. On the other side, it says left. So if I need to go right, I go the other way. Let's see where we're hitting now. Okay, I'll take another shot. Okay, 
good. There's three shots touching. We need to come uh, more to the right. So I'm like a, a turn and a half here. Let's see where we're at now. Ooh, got a little high. shots here and you can keep track of how many shots you have left right at right there in the little window oh, I gotta watch my hold I was getting a little far forward stay back a little bit okay shots we'll put a fresh target up too here in a minute kind of want to push push my hand forward a little bit but I'm trying to remember to hold back be more towards this curve just for that consistency thing I was talking about earlier okay let's see if we come a little bit more come back to the left a little bit got a couple more shots what do we got here? All right, this is the last one. Last shot. There it is. All right, so now we've kind of worked it into the center. I'm going to throw up another target, and we'll see how many of this next mag I can put, like, in the little center area and see how I do. Let me go swap that target. I'll be right back. Let's see what we can get here. Now again, these are the absolute first shots I've taken with this gun. So no break in, no barrel cleaning, just out of the box. What are we going to get? <sighs> yeah, I do like it when guns just work <laughs> without having to do a lot of work. I may want to hold a little bit more forward on the stock, just me personally. We'll see here. Make sure all of these snap into place. Remember when you're loading the mag, you got to make sure that that little rubber O-ring grabs the waist of the pellet. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, let's see how we do. I'm going to have to go get one of my um, thumb hole stock. This feels more substantial to me, like a little bit more solid. Um, I really like it. I, I think I prefer this. I'm going to hold a little bit more forward here. Let's see what that does to my point of impact. All right, so I'm going to aim dead center. Let's see how we do. A little bit high. Let's see if that comes down or if that's because of my hold, changing my hold. Let's take a few more shots here. I'm going to go back to a more rearward hold and see what that does, because that was going a little high. Oh, still high. Oh, she's grouped nice. I just need to get it down into the center.
Okay. Well, um, yeah, that's actually pretty good. I'm gonna go grab that target. Um, obviously, we're shooting a little bit high. Um, I would think maybe we'd go ahead and put this out at 25 yards in our next video, or you know, when we do our full review, and we'll see where our, where our scope is hitting. But for now. Um, yeah, I'll take that group size, uh, and it may take a little time for everything to settle in a little bit, but all in all, that's pretty darn good, and it wasn't a huge difference in my position, so that's kind of cool, so I'm pretty sure as long as I'm somewhere in this textured area, and, I'm, and I keep the rest of my hold consistent, I'm not going to have a dramatic change in my point of impact. Let me go grab that target, and we'll uh, take a look at it and wrap this up. Be right back. All right, guys, so those are the first shots right out of the gun. Um, I, I mean, obviously, after sighting it in, but yeah, I mean, we'll shoot a little bit more in preparation for our review video, but that's pretty doggone good. I mean, uh, I don't know about you, but if I got something brand new, put the scope on it, wasn't familiar with it, well, I'm pretty familiar with these guns, but let's just say we get this gun in and I start shooting, and right out of the box, we're getting that. Yeah, to me, that's pretty cool. That's what I that's what I like to see. And you guys get the basic idea. If I wanted to walk that down, I'd make my scope adjustments. I think 15 yards is a little bit close. We need to back this up at least to 20 yards and see where we're hitting. And we go to 25, see where we're hitting and so forth. So we'll, we'll save that for our next video. But for right now, I'm pretty excited about how this is working out. I really do like this stock a lot. This is the Pro versus the regular uh, Gamo Magnum. Um, they have a thumb hole stock if that's what you like, or they have this new pro version. And yeah, I really like, I think I like this better. Um, I hadn't shot a break for a little while, so that, that first shot kind of <laughs> surprised me. It's been a bit since I've fired one of these, but yeah, it seemed I settled in pretty quickly. All right, that's gonna be it for now, guys. We'll say thank you for watching. Remember, we have our Patreon channel, and we also have the Officers Club over at Aragon Army. If you wanna see some exclusive content, some behind the scenes content, or you want early access and ads free content, definitely check it out. And your support is obviously very much appreciated. In fact, we appreciate all of our viewers and want to say thank you for watching. My name is Rick Huster here with Airgun Web, your home for old school Airgun reviews where we tell you the facts, not fluff. See you guys next time.